So we're at Helbeck Quarry, which is not too far from Kirby Stephen. And what we're doing is looking out over the Eden Valley. This is the upper Eden Valley you can see here. And this is where the River Eden starts, about eight miles away up the valley. It's on the watershed of Yorkshire and Cumbria. And on the right hand side of the U-shaped valley, very glacial this, you can see Wild Boar Fell. So cool because they say that the last wild boar in England was killed there. And people in Henry VIII's time used to go up there on their horses and gallop across the mile wide plateau and hunt things. On the left hand side you've got the Malastang edge which is the other edge that goes right along and that's very flat on the top and full of heather and all kinds of wonderful things. It's quite wild up there. Okay, so this path up here, this is, uh, we're going up towards Mount Ida. So this is part of the Helbeck estate and we're also on the edge of MOD territory here as well. So in the past, we haven't been allowed to walk very far. So this estate, Helbeck, has now opened up um, uh, a, a short walk it's called a permissive path, whatever that means. Um, and there's a place called Fox Tower, which is a folly, one of these follies that was built attached to the big house. And so this tower has magnificent views from here out over the Eden Valley. And the first time I came here, it was like, wow! All of a sudden I can see the valley from a completely new angle because I'd never seen it from this angle before. So you can see the shape of the glacial valley over there. You can see the hills I've climbed on. You can see the Eden Valley over there, wild boar, the Howgills opening up. And then around the corner here, you'll see the whole of the Lake District laid out in front of you. It's amazing. So the estate Helbeck, I've actually read a history about it, which was written by the, the lady who um, owned the estate. It's been owned um, over the centuries by a family. They're, they're called the Blackett Ords. And she died a few years ago and then split the estate between her children. So this, is, this bit of the estate we're walking on used to be the grouse shooting area, the pheasant shooting area, and, and goes up onto the moors. And this bit was taken by um, Ben Blackett Ord and his wife, who during the pandemic decided to live up here rather than in London with their children, their grown up children, and really enjoyed it and wondered how they could develop it further. Then there was a, a programme initiated by the government called the Green Recovery Fund, which offered money to estates uh, to move away from shooting and to become a bit more eco-friendly. So they got a lot of money from the um, various government agencies, including the, um, I think it's the AONB, the Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty, and the RSPB, the Woodland Trust, not quite sure who else. <laughs> Lots of people got together and they produced a plan which they've been executing over the last 18 months, uh, some of which I was actually involved in. Uh, so they decided that they would open up access to the estate. They would plant a lot more trees. They've done a lot of development of the area in terms of the wetlands and the peatlands there. They're trying to encourage the curlews to nest. So I got involved in it um, in that they had a few walks and events last summer. So I went on a lovely walk, a quite bizarre walk actually, that was a walk with folk music. And during that time we got to understand about what um, the organisations were doing to develop the estate and to make it more environmentally friendly. Um, there were some fantastic young people who were involved in those organisations who I got talking to and then they had a voluntary uh, seed pick one day which I went along on. Uh, what they were doing was picking the seeds from certain trees. They were going to take them away and dry them and then they were going to scatter them on the land and see what happened. So I haven't actually heard, so we'll have to see if any of those seedlings have actually uh, survived the deer and the rabbits and things like that. The estate's owned by the Black Adored family, mm -hmm. which of course is three primary members, aren't there? Yes, yes, of it. Three boys, one interested yeah. in renting land, one interested in shooting and one in interested in ecological issues. Yeah. And uh, of course this area, ancient woodland, uh, not, we can access it here, but we can't access it further up. Mm. We can't walk the length of the swindle, mm. things like that. But the, the, the more there's access to places like this, the better. I'm a sheep farmer's son from Malastang. 
And I think what the AONB and all the organisations were trying to do was to, to, to produce a model for other landowners to say you don't need to make your money by um, shooting, there are other ways of using the land and using the land for good purpose and more long term management in terms of planting trees and water retention, development of the peat areas etc.